give the saints a little bit of time to come marching in. Got a good little classroom? We're getting there. Okay, cool. Peace to the saints. And Marquette. Marquette. I appreciate that. Marquette, Devon, Burton. The saint and the sinner. I want to talk to you guys about the masculine thinking and actions of a man. And it's so important right now because I'm noticing... The internet is filled with incels and weirdos who are lying to themselves, calling themselves alpha this, calling other people beta that, not realizing that none of this is very masculine. I kid you not, let me tell you about a weirdo that I encountered today. This weirdo looked me up on Instagram, went through my Instagram profile, went all the way down toward the bottom to where I have a a belt that I won in Atlanta for boxing. And mind you, you may have seen the footage when I like eight piece the guy and the footage, Bridget was getting the footage, she was right next to young jock when I eight piece this dude and his corner threw in the towel. But anyways, this nerd says, oh, where's the footage at? You know, like, uh, like, I wanna see you fight, man. Like I bet I could take you. First off, bro, let's be realistic. You're on the internet, right? You're not gonna see me in real life. And realistically, a man is serious. That's what I really wanna start with. The thinking of a man is serious. You might play with your female, right? You might play with your children, but you don't play with other males. Males are of war, you dig? Males are physically designed for combat. The reason you guys think I'm so tall, one, I am tall, but number two, a female's holding the camera. So she has to shoot up at me. So I look even taller. Muscle mass, bone density. The physical body is designed for war, but you guys are getting super feminine, always joking and playing with other men. You can only do that to a certain degree, especially if you don't know someone. So I really wanna start off with number one, as a man, you need to take yourself seriously and you need to choose your words wisely and be of few words and think before you speak. A young and earlier today on Instagram, I went live, 15 year old kid said, if I saw you Marquette, I would talk to you like a friend. You 15 son, why would you talk to me like a friend? That's disrespect. Now I'm a serious man. I would never condone that. So I just wanted to get on this and I want to take any question, thought or comment you have on masculinity because a lot of you guys are not serious and you'll hear me reemphasize this because as a male, you got to realize the reason I'm so serious is because there's no mercy for you as a male. I notice through every country I go, I see mostly homeless men. Why is that? Because women can live under a man for free. When countries create shelters, they're usually for women and children, which means that the men have to go out and struggle on their own to make a living. Being a man is a serious thing. When a guy says to me, Marquette, I beat you in a boxing match, or if I saw you, I want to spar you, or blah, 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 blah. They don't realize. Now, I grew up in LA around real goons, and I'm real thorough. I don't joke. So if you tell me you want to spar me, I don't look at that as an athletic activity. I look at that as a threat. And if I saw you, I wouldn't put on boxing gloves because to me, it's not, we're not about to engage in a sport. We're going to engage in life or death. So if one of these internet clowns saw me in person and said something crazy, I would literally try to. We're back on. Can I get through these other? Yeah, go ahead. 
said tuition. I got the black box today. I'm very excited to get into it to get the many jewels you put into this piece of work. And I am blessed to back again, and he said present. And he needs tuition again. Appreciate it, Saint. And let me talk to you guys about masculine actions. Like me, I've conditioned my mind so strongly to be about this work, you dig? As far as physical and mental fitness, I woke up so early, first thing I did was went on a five mile run on a goddamn mountain. And I did it so early that by the time we got to Guatepe, which is where we are now, even higher up in the mountain, as soon as I unpacked, my first thought was, I gotta get to the gym. I start getting dressed and I'm going to the gym and I tell Bridget, you know, I just realized something, I already worked out today. I don't have a fight coming up, I don't have anything coming up, but it's always war time in here. My mind always demands it. It's been so long since I worked out, my mind said, let's go get it back in. You heard me? You can never compete with that. I want my followers to be like soldiers, special forces operatives that you could drop down anywhere in the world and they know how to survive and hustle and win. You guys on the internet, and I'm not talking to the saints, I'm talking to the non-believers who have joined just to hate. You guys are such clowns when you think this is not a competitive world. When you guys are saying things like, Oh, you can't, you can't attack another man. You can't attack another black man. Absolutely, you can and you should. I'm encouraging my followers to know that anyone who is in opposition to the straight path, to the way of righteousness, we are bringing war to you. Absolutely, because here's the key to life. The key to life is war. Nothing is easy. You get on that pull-up bar, you're going against gravity. It's a fight. You're fighting against gravity. You're fighting against your own laziness. All of life is struggle. If you think it's going to be kumbaya and all harmony, absolutely not. Now, if you're one of the saints, peace and blessings. If you're one of the blind, a non-believer, then absolutely, we're going to bring war to you. That's just what it is. Okay, we have Jason Lawrence. He said tuition, he's a real pimp. All day, every day. Yeah, man, I'm working out like I'm locked up in the pen, you dig? Yeah, I wish one of these suckers would run up on me in real life, think I won't body him. Yeah, I enjoy war. <sighs> this workout number two, easy work. And I'm just here for questions and comments. If your pop didn't school you, if you find yourself that you see a strong man and you don't like it, I'm here right now for you to answer questions, you dig? My mentality is Mike Tyson when he was a goon. You heard me? When he used to go to the press conference and tell people that he wanted to step on their testicles. When he used to go to the press conference and tell Lennox Lewis that he wanted to hurt his kids. That's me, I'm not Mike Tyson, you dig? Turn up, cause here's the thing. You guys are calling yourself savages. Oh, he's a beast. But are they really beasts? Are they really savages? Are they really goons? But you hate the bad guy when he shows up in the flesh. What I'm telling you guys is there's no need to be nice. Be kind, courteous, be a gentleman. But when you got to pursue your ends, you turn into a savage for anyone who wants to step in your way. If I wanted to, I would disrespect anybody on the internet. Anybody. Why? Because in the real world, none of them could see me. I would never be worried about an internet guy because I had real beef in the streets with real gangsters, you dig? I got a scar right here from somebody trying to slit my throat. It didn't work, it was amateur hour, you dig? Why would I be scared of an internet beef? Give me a break. So what I'm telling you guys is if somebody gets in your way, chop them down immediately. And here's the other thing to understand. Masculine thinking, linear towards your goal. Every time you say a word, or you make a move, it's intentional. Hope said, should you always be expressive when talking, or are there pros to being monotone or low-key? Absolutely. Like, for example, you'll never see me more even, more monotone, more emotionless than when I'm discussing a problem with a female. Because at that point, I know she's in an elevated emotional state, 
and I need to bring her down to the level of reason and rationality. So that's when I start using Socratic questioning. That's when I start being very calm and saying, I observed you do this, this, and this, or I heard you state this, this, and this. That's when you become very detached so that you're not both escalating, because at that point, you're managing your own emotional state and her emotional state. Everything you do as a man with masculine thinking, you have to look at it from the godly level above the clouds, taking an aerial view to decide how you need to move the chess pieces on the board. Sometimes you need to be theatrical to influence. Truth be told, I'm an arid intellectual. When I'm talking to you guys, I'm theatrical because it keeps attention. I might crack a joke or be vulgar because it keeps attention. In reality, I don't like vulgarity at all. So you have to understand and mastermind the whole situation. The real saints, which are the intellectual leadership class of humankind, they see what I'm doing. The blind have no real understanding. At the end of the day, your boy's a warrior king. You hear me? And I recommend that you understand as a warrior king how to manage your court and how to switch into different personalities and be dynamic as needed so you can be effective. Okay, last one is an intuition earlier. He just put a question in. He said, I got into real estate this year, Quet, and have one property under my belt. How do you feel about real estate investing? It's great. Shout out to him. Owning some of the land, owning some of the earth, a critical piece of wealth. So I'm very proud of him. In fact, I want to get some of this earth in the name of the assassin. So shout out to him. I would have told him though, wait for that crash because there's certainly a pending bubble that's going to burst in the real estate market so you can get a good deal. But there's never anything wrong with starting early. As the master Sun Tzu says, haste can be folly, but delay is never wise. So shout out. Real estate, one of the most straightforward businesses there is. So highly recommend it. The Saints got anything else? No. This topic, you'd think cats would be asking me questions with all of the feminine behavior I observe. We have LeBron James here. He yeah. said, should you talk to your female about the negatives about LGB, LGBTQP or no? That's a phenomenal question. What I want you to understand is that your female should never see you as a wicked or evil person. The moment they see you as a negative or mean-spirited person, your ability to influence them will erode because the female is of love. So you have to be able to communicate with her on that wavelength. Like for example, you have parents who are taking little boys and saying that they are transgender and giving them permanent surgeries to their genitalia which are physically damaging the kids and causing confusion. So what I would do if I were you, rather than tell her directly what you think, I'd slide her a little bit of literature written by a scholar. There's a doctor, a guy who's a PhD MD. He went to Johns Hopkins Medical, born a male, transitioned into a female, got the surgery, lived years as a female, went through much mental turmoil, was not happy, transitioned back into a male and then wrote a number of scientific papers on it both on the biological destruction his body suffered but also on the psychological turmoil and he concluded that when you engage in this scientific manipulation of the human form you are basically cooperating with the lunacy in the brain of the person who thinks they're having gender dysmorphia Okay, we might have to hop off. I think we're back on. Okay. Hey, Saints, you got to forgive me. We're on vacation. We're really high up in the mountains, so the Wi-Fi is not so good. But I just really find it so important that as a male, you live as a man. So many males are scared of conflict. How can you be a male and be scared of conflict? You can never be a protector of a woman. For example... Yesterday, in our five-star hotel, there was the discrepancy with the bill. And people were trying to argue with Bridget. She said, wait, wait, hold on. 
I'll be right back. She went and got me and said, Marquette, this is the issue, go take care of it. Why is that? Because a woman wants to be able to appeal to a greater power. If you're sweet and you're scared of conflict, I don't wanna be mean. Your woman can't appeal to you as a greater power because you are not a greater power. If you don't have any fire in your belly as a man, what kind of man are you? Yeah, I'm here to let you know. Life is hard, so you got to be hard. I'm not telling you to go out and be rowdy. Quite the contrary, I'm saying be a gentleman. But when it's time to take an iron fist to things, I want you to smash everything to pieces because that's just what it has to be. Either you're going to be on top or you're going to be in the bottom in this world. Something will master and something will slave. It is feminine for a male to live in a state of complaining. And I so often see people cracking meaningless jokes in the chat. I love jokes just as much as any other man. But Saint, if you're able to sit at the feet of a wise person and hear them impart knowledge, why would you waste your time asking what height a man is, what a man weighs? This is irrelevancy. I teach you to focus, keep your eyes on the prize. It is not masculine to be concerned with all of these irrelevancies. To me, that's a soap opera. That's for women to be concerned about nonsense. Okay, I have one quick statement. Mayor Rogers said I lost 30 pounds because of you, brother. I got rid of my diabetes. Thank you so much for your motivation. Yeah. I knew you'd like to hear that. And then yeah. tuition payment. Absolutely. And Clarence, shout out to Clarence. Because when you get in this mindset, you heard me, and you get serious and you... You engage in war with yourself, with your own laziness, man, that's going to change your life. When you've brainwashed yourself, wash, clean it out, clean out the filth. Man, you're going to love the exercise. You're going to need the work. You dig? I'm okay. telling you, man. Tuition. He said, tuition for the practical knowledge. Take notes and make sure to like the video, fellow saints. Appreciate it. And then another one from Ty were the Bill Sylvester. He said, how would you go about giving masculine advice to men and advice to help women? Well, how would I go about it? Well, that's what I'm doing right now. You got to get on the platform that makes sense to you. But what I can assure you of, if you've not already reached the mountaintop, forget everybody else. Don't pull anybody up. You get to the mountaintop first. Now remember, every time you guys see us, we're in a different hotel in a different country on a different mountaintop. We have the luxury of being able to say, hey, this is how you do it. But if you haven't gotten up there yet, don't waste time trying to school the youth because in a real sense, you are the youth. So if you haven't already been winning, don't try to tell people how to win. So that's number one, make sure you win. Make sure you build up your network, build up your wealth. And then people will come to you and ask you how you won. You feel me? I wanna be clear. I never tried to be a YouTuber. I made videos on things that I thought were meaningful and then people came and asked questions and I elaborated. People asked me to do more book reviews and so I obliged them. But I didn't ever want to become a content creator. There are too many people who want to become content creators, which is like, I guess when I was your age, that would be the equivalent of becoming a celebrity. I'm, obviously, I'm nowhere near that, but you understand what I mean. Be shy of spotlights. Guys, for as much as I do tell you of my life, there's so much that I don't tell you. And as a man, you have to understand at a certain level, you got to keep some things in here. I'm a very secretive person. There are a multitude of things that I've never spoken of and probably will never speak of. I don't want to be in that spotlight because there's so much danger in being in that spotlight. So I really want to caution you guys who are eager to step into the spotlight and be under that bright light under a microscope. Look at Kanye. He's cracked under that microscope and that spotlight. People may say he's got billions of dollars, which may or may not be true. But what is clear is that he's having mental health issues. So get your stuff together before you help anyone else. And as we always say within the assassin, reach out to those who are within your reach. I've, yeah, I've done great things on YouTube, but you can meet kids in real life who said, Mr. Burton was my teacher for two years. Every day I saw him for two years. There's no glamor in that. There's no fame in that. 
You can do that in your neighborhood, in your community, with your siblings, with, with your neighborhood. So always consider what is simple to do if you really want to render service. Don't seek the spotlight. Hey, drug hour to the super chat. He said preach. Peace to drug hours. Gaia sent more tuition. He said looking to hire an assistant for my fine art business. Any general tips on hiring big bro? Absolutely. Tip number one. Do not use Facebook. Those people are lower class who will ap apply to the job. Use LinkedIn. If you can make a requirement that the person have a bachelor's degree, that's going to help you because it will weed out a lot of people who are inconsistent and lazy. If there is a person who doesn't have a bachelor's degree and they got a lot of hustle, give them an opportunity. I recently hired an assistant who does not have a bachelor's degree. She has a tremendous amount of hustle. Let me tell you how I end up hiring her. I put the job on LinkedIn. She applied to it. I, did, I declined her application. Then she DM'd me on LinkedIn. I didn't respond. Then she DM'd me on Instagram. Hey, are you still hiring for this job? I told her I was not gonna do, uh, hire for that job. I'd rather use the money for something else. Then she says, oh, well, whatever you're gonna use the money for, I bet I could do that too. Then I said, damn, get your ass over here for an interview. She came and interviewed. I've had a great relationship ever since. Excellent hard worker, very tenacious. I encourage you, if you have the capital, always be hiring, especially if it's an assistant. I got two of them. Um, Bridget was there when I interviewed the last one. So always be hiring because an assistant, similar to a romantic interest, hey, she might be here today, might be gone tomorrow. Always be hiring, always bring in talent. You hire the right woman, you're going to find that she's going to bring in more money. She's going to make you wealthier. Oh, and never hire a male assistant. I hate when guys apply to my, my assistant job. Knock it off. It's weird. Again, with the masculine thinking. It's not masculine to be a male wanting to assist another male. You're not built for that. You're built to be the leader, not the follower. Don't be my assistant. It's weird. I've been doing and thinking. I'm with my tribe. Love you, King. Peace to the King. Guy Cruz also just sent another tuition payment. He said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, truly a pleasure. Truly a pleasure. Yeah, and if you guys can hire someone to help you, please do. Because women are sharp, detail-oriented, consistent. They aim to please. If it's a woman, I'm not talking about a lazy, low-class broad, but a real woman will bring those characteristics to your business and she'll love on you. And that's just going to lift you up. So if you have that extra capital, definitely allocate it to a, an assistant. Highly recommend it. In terms of masculine thinking, it's always the woman who's like, don't run so far. Don't run at night. Don't overtrain. Do you have a woman in your head? Are you guys thinking with a woman in your head? Don't hurt yourself. Don't overdo it. Don't go too hard. That's a woman in your head. That's your mommy. That's your mommy's voice in your head. You really need to have a savage in your head. You really need to have me in your head saying, oh, you just gonna work out one time today? Oh, oh, you're sore. You're gonna give up, huh? Okay. You need to have me in your head, smiling at you like, oh, you can't give me 10 more? Yeah, because guess what? My body is destroyed right now. Yeah, and it hurts so good. Yeah, because guess what? This is not just for my body. This is for my mind. I do this for my mind. I have no logical reason that I need to be big and strong. I don't lift heavy objects for a living. I'm retired. I do this for my mind, just to know that I'm hard. That's it. Ah. Castro sent another super chat. We have the same people sending them, so thank you to them. He said, how to deal with one of these thugs that are drunk and are threatening me while I'm at work. I'm a bouncer and I always feel like I'm getting tested. You are, you are being tested constantly. As a bouncer, you're in a unique position because 
you're one of the guys people size up immediately when they come in the club. So I understand what you're dealing with. And depending on the city, like I'm from LA, when we used to go to the club, we show up with like 10 people. Bouncer is a very challenging position to be in. Generally speaking, you always want to be thinking of your exit plan. So I'm talking about as a profession. Do you want to be a bouncer forever? If you're finding that you're not comfortable in that position, which is clearly one in which you're at physical risk, that's actually your job to be at physical risk, I'd say number one, you should be thinking in the back of my mind, well, I'm being paid for my size right now, not for my thoughts. How can I transition into work that's gonna pay me for my thoughts? That's number one. Number two, I want you to remember, whatever they're paying you to be a bouncer is not worth your life. You hear me? When you do your job, that's all fine and well, but never do your job to the point where you put yourself at bodily harm or risking your life for whatever $10, $20, $30 they're paying you because life is precious. And if you're gonna risk your life, risk it for your own honor, risk it to protect your family and loved ones. Don't risk it to protect the property of the club or to protect some dumb broad who's been drinking too much. So that's another thing I want you to remember. Another thing, I assume you're a man of stature whether you're a man of great stature physically or stature in terms of your respect, whatever it is, people can see that. And when you know you're in the position of power, you don't have to flex on people. So when you see people acting crazy, don't taunt them, just be a professional. Hey, excuse me, sir. I asked you one time to hop in line. I want to keep things peaceful. I want you to have a good time tonight. Would you please just work with me? Hop in line, keep a smile on, Conduct yourself with professionalism, because remember, you're there to do a job. You don't have to impress anyone. You don't have to look good. So as a bouncer, just keep it cool, keep the peace, because at the end of the day, you're there just for a check. You're linear thinking. I'm here to make money. When someone disrespects you as a bouncer, they're not disrespecting you. They're just trying to rebel against authority, and you're the authority figure there. So don't take offense to that. Do your job. Keep it easy. And remember, you're just trying to clock out and go home to your loved ones. But real quick, if they put their hands on you, beat their motherfucking ass. Okay, go ahead. And ask me tuition. He didn't say anything. But okay. In the super chat. Yeah. Lee E pays tuition. He said you give so much free games, tuition paid. Appreciate that, Lee E. Shout out. And for the people who believe they don't have enough money to send in a dollar, click that thumbs up button. And if it's true that you don't have enough money to send in a dollar, do yourself a service and put to use what I'm telling you. It will bring you a fortune. I don't tell you empty words. I tell you the words of a man who's come from the mud and made it out and stayed out of the mud, okay? And another thing I want you guys to understand about wealth, a man knows that his wealth is not in the hand. His wealth is in the mind. By the way, somebody DM me on the assassin.com so I could write that down for the quotes. A man's wealth is not in the hand, it's in the mind, which means that you could lose all the wealth and make it again because you have a millionaire mindset. A man is not afraid because he knows the abundance is here. He can always create from the mind. Further, to be wealthy is to be able to give. So even if you have very little money, you must practice giving because it creates the feeling of abundance. I remember when I lived in Baltimore, Maryland, and I felt very poor after I stopped teaching. I was running a nonprofit. I would go to this church. And every time it was time to tithe, I felt anxious, like, oh, God, I need this money. But then I got to the point to where I could peel out a couple bucks. I felt kind of like a boss, like, damn, you know, I could afford to peel it out. And as I grew and became wealthier, the more I could give out money, I felt like, okay, that's wealth. Like, for example, in Mexico City, which, you know, we were in Mexico like a month and a half ago. In Mexico City, the cartels right? What they'll do is they'll go to a restaurant and then the mariachi will walk by and they'll hire the mariachi to play music live. They'll just basically say the song and the mariachi will play the song and sing it. Almost like a live jukebox, right? And then they just pay out the mariachi money. To the cartel is nothing. It's nothing to a boss to peel out a couple pesos. To the, uh, to the mariachi, it means a lot to them. And I just looked at that dynamic and I said, man, that's wealth when you have enough to give practice a wealthy mentality and I don't care if it's being able to give out 50 cents because you should know if you can give out 50 cents 
you have at least $2 in your pocket. If you can give out a dollar, you got at least $10 in your pocket. So make sure that you're earning more so you can give more. Stay motivated. Quick question, and then we have a couple of super chats. Yeah. Too. AJB said, yo, by any chance, do you do consultations? I do do consultations on business. If you want to start a company, create a product or service. Um, I know you might not be familiar with me, but you know, I've done technology businesses on the software side, on the hardware side, not as a peon, but as the CEO and founder. I've done business with the Chinese government, the Korean government, the Puerto Rican government as the chief executive officer, opened up uh, offices in many American cities uh, from Springfield, Missouri to St. Louis, Missouri to Baltimore, Maryland, uh, to Cincinnati, Ohio, to San Juan, Puerto Rico, to Seoul, Korea, and the list goes on. So business, that's what I really do. Also on the side of personal development, because I'm all about you being sharp mentally and physically. I can help you navigate and get to what you want also with relationships. So in any of those categories, go to thesassin.com, T-H-E-S-A-S-N, click consultation, and go ahead and get booked up. Hey, Marcus Mercado paid another tuition payment. He said, I don't have the capital to hire an assistant for my business at the moment, personal training lead generation. Yeah. Any suggestions on what to do? Yes, and you know what? This is gold. Depending on what you are doing for a living, whatever industry you're in, if you're in an industry that allows you to get paid based on your efforts. Maybe you might call it sales. So for example, Marcos, say you're a personal trainer and you bring on other personal trainers. And basically, when they close a sale, you get paid and they get paid. Well, then what you wanna do is create a Craigslist ad or a Facebook ad and say, hey, you know, I have this role. You will get paid this percentage of every deal that you close. So create a job where you don't have to pay a salary up front. You pay it on the back end based on the sale that they make. So that's what I would recommend. Here's another thing if you're thinking about assistance and you want to be able to hire a low cost assistant. You can hire a remote assistant that works in the Philippines, is educated, has great English, and will work at low cost. There are a lot of Anglophone countries, South Africa, the Philippines, and many others where people are educated, they speak good English, and they work for $4 an hour and can get done the menial tasks or the simple jobs that you require. So I highly recommend that. Hey, Curtis Easton, he's an emperor, so just want to thank him for being on here. Oh, absolutely, Curtis. Jordan Insweiler said tuition, he said tuition. Appreciate that, Jordan. We have a couple more. And if Curtis, the emperor, um, has a question, feel free to ask your question. I'll be happy to answer it. Danny Darko paid tuition. He said, how do you deal with two-faced people? Mostly get away from them. Remember, there are some people that if you crush them, you benefit. There are other people that if you crush them, you might feel happy or you might feel better, but it doesn't benefit your grand plan. Like, for example, Kevin Samuels, I crush him, then I get more views. That benefits me, my master plan. There are other people on YouTube whom I won't name. If I crush them, nobody would care. So I don't even waste time crushing them. Those kind of two-faced individuals, I just let them be. I don't worry about them. Because you have to realize, when you're the shit, it's going to be a lot of flies buzzing around you. So get away from those people. Don't waste time and energy on them. Masculine thinking, linear, goal-oriented, strategic, non-emotional. I appreciate that and absolutely and when you really get to the point in which you're tired of seeing other men succeed while you stay in the same place you'll be willing to invest um, you know 15 bucks in yourself you're not investing 15 bucks in me because I wipe my ass with 15 bucks I wipe my ass with a couple hundred bucks um, so it's not for me it's for you okay when you get to the point where you really want more in life you're gonna say Screw this Netflix subscription, screw Hulu. Let me get something that's going to give me knowledge and motivation and put the fire to my butt so I go out and do something. Sounds like that was a cash app. Let me shout out whoever that was. I wanna acknowledge that. Abdullah, Abdullah Rashid, appreciate it saying thank you for the super chat. But you know what I'm here to do, you guys might say Marquette, man. 
you hitting us with the iron fist and it's true. And the reason I do that, cause I was hit with the iron fist and I only grew from it. When I was a young man, I had the privilege every weekend I went to my uncle Jimmy's house. Happy nuclear family, uncle Jimmy, aunt Leslie and their son Anthony, he was about my age. And uncle Jimmy didn't take any BS, none. I swear to God, if you read the black box, you'll, you'll read my book. I lay out these stories that are formative experiences that made me a man. I kid you not, there was one time, it was me, cousin Anthony and Aunt Leslie, his mother, at the dinner table, we're having milk and cookies. Anthony's lactose intolerant. He knew damn well he shouldn't have been having any milk. This kid's drinking some milk, we're like eight years old. He gets gas and rips off a vicious fart. Burr. He starts laughing. I look and I see Uncle Jimmy before I start laughing. I see Anthony start laughing. Anthony's cracking up. So then he looks at his mom. His mom starts cracking up. They look at me. I'm trying to hold it in because I know Uncle Jimmy's a savage. He does not tolerate you being a low person, not being civil. I kid you not. You know what Uncle Jimmy did? He said, that it, that's it. Everything's done. Leave the cookies there. Leave the milk there. You guys are going to bed. And you too made his wife go to bed like a damn kid. That's power, that's intensity, and that's standards, which is to say when someone does something grotesque at the dinner table, in this household, we don't stand for it. Send everybody to bed, including Aunt Leslie. Why? Because she was acting like a child, and it's upon the man to keep order. He's a serious man. Take yourself seriously. Now, for all I know, after he sent everybody to bed, he might have laughed his ass off at it. Who knows? Okay, but, I have to, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but as a man, you got to hold the line. Talk to me. I have a couple super chats to get through. But first, Xavier Roman said he's not lying about the assistance out in the Philippines. Tomorrow I'm scheduled for my to meet with my cold caller at $3 per hour. He's right on. Good message, Saint. Thank you. Thank you. And that's why I love when there's real business people on the line because they can attest to what I'm saying. And if you really done business around the world, you probably would have heard of me before. And that's why if you do your Googles, you'll find pictures of me in South Korea. You'll find pictures of me in China with Chinese people following me around with cameras. Same thing in, in Korea. And here's the thing. You might get a, a consultation from one of these internet guys, but what value can they give you when they've never left more than a mile outside of their city they grew up in? What value can they give you when their only job has been as a YouTuber? I mean, come on. You said that okay, one. I thought I did. Just wanted to make sure I didn't miss yeah. it. Hoover D sent a super chat. He said, give and it will be given to you. Saints, please listen. He just taught the law of giving. Shout out to St. Louis. I was born and raised there and went to undergrad at MSU in Springfield. Hey, and let me tell you how much we talk in boss status out here, you dig? Your boy did a deal with MSU. We sold technology to MSU. Big deals, B2B sales, you dig? We had an office in Springfield. So you know what we really talking about here, man. Come on now. I even had a, an MSU ID because I had an office there. Okay, Lee E sent another good container. He said, curious, can you share your daily routine? Just curious. Let's say this. Wake up as early as you possibly can, period. Ideally before the sun. Wake up before the sun, then go ahead and get your exercise in. Then eat a lean meal, clean up, pray, meditate. Prayers, when you're talking to whoever out there you might believe in, if you believe in that. Meditate, that's when you're talking to yourself. And I believe so deeply in self-talk to where you're telling yourself, Marquette, you're the man. Marquette, you can do this. Marquette, you got this. Hey, don't panic, don't panic. Whatever you need to tell yourself in your given situation, that's what you're telling yourself. You're programming your mind so that you roll through the day on autopilot, feeling strong, feeling worthy, feeling vicious, feeling like iron. That's what you do. Then make sure you got that to-do list. And guess where that to-do list came from? You wrote that the night before, before you, woke, before you went to bed. So you wake up with purpose because you wrote the to-do list before bed. Then get that to-do list out and go ahead and get started on the most important item. Yeah. Okay, NS sent another two inch payment. He said, how to make 50K in one year? I am a student. 50K in one year? That's easy. 
That's easy. But the question, you got to think internal before you think external. Are you a 50K a year man? Are you a 50K a year person? Yeah. You have to familiarize yourself with business processes. It's, it's very simple to make 50K a year. Get a good product. You're in a unique era. You can put a market, a product on Amazon and sell it around the whole planet Earth. The planet Earth has billions of people. Ten years ago, that was not possible. But the first question before you can do that is, do you understand business processes? Just the day before yesterday, I had a consultation with a saint named James. He has a new product, and I love shouting out the products that I learn about on my consultations because I want you guys to buy them, and I want to buy them. He's putting on the market a, um, a chocolate sea moss protein meal replacement. Great product. We went through the business process of, A, what are your inputs? What are the costs that you have to incur to produce this? And how will your costs lower as you get up to 100 units, 500 units? How much are we packaging it for? How are you distributing it? How can we go through customer discovery to learn who your early adopter is? Your early adopter is the most likely demographic who's willing to take a risk on a new entrepreneur and a new product. Once we've gone through that, we then identify a customer profile. What's the average age, the average income, the, the typical gender, the geographic location of this person who would buy your product, right? We go through that whole process. Then we create a presentation that he can use internally with the people who work for him and a presentation that he can use to pull in investors or to pull in sales. Once you understand that process, which can be applied to any kind of business, then you will find it easy to make $50,000 a year. Because guess what? My goal is to make $40,000 a month. That's without a corporation. That's just on side, what you guys would call side hustles. And I don't even believe in side hustles. I believe in a main job, a main company. Jason Lawrence, he paid tuition. He said, just bought your book. Is there any other good books I can read to keep myself sharp? And I'm just going to say, anyone on here, if you bought your book on Amazon, please leave a review for Marquette. Thank you, Bridget. You're welcome. If you just bought the book, if, you, if you're, what you're saying is accurate, if you just bought it, take your time and read it and soak it up. We're in the microwave era where we do things too quickly. Men, the only thing you should do slowly every time is making love with a woman you care about. Take your time with that. But things that don't matter, you can speed through. But a piece of literature, that is like making love to a good woman. Take your time and dive in there because you really, really need to pull things out of it and apply it. Take your time with a good piece of literature or with a good woman, okay? So that's my number one piece of advice. Number two, if you wanna change your life, your life change doesn't come from reading, it comes from action. And so take what you get out that book and identify an action plan and start taking action. If you're not going out in this world and getting your helmet slapped off, if you're not going out in this world and getting punched in the eye, metaphorically speaking, you're not going hard enough. You should be failing here and there. You should be having challenges. You should be getting cut and bruised out in this world. Yeah. So stop with all these books. I wrote the black box to end all these books. You heard me? I don't even need you to read the whole damn book. If you read the first chapter and it blows your mind up and you say, okay, I'm gonna get to work on this, this, and this, Work on those things until you run out of gas and then reread the next chapter. Hey, Ivan Alavante sent in a tuition payment. He said, I have a question. I'm an insurance agent and I have trouble with my client respecting my time. I also have a full-time job, so any thoughts are respecting my time? I mean, they make appointments and don't pay. <laughs> Anytime. Generally speaking, especially if you're dealing with lower ticket products, meaning either the product is low cost it's a non-luxury product, or you're dealing with things where you're trying to sell something that people don't really feel they need or they're not excited to get, you're gonna have a lot of broken appointments, okay? So if you can create a structure where there's a fee to break the appointment, or if you use this strategy, which is commonly used in dental offices, when you book the appointment with someone, if it's face-to-face, -face, 
you hand them a card and have them write down the appointment. They write it down in their own hand. If you can get someone to sign something or write it down, that increases the likelihood of conversion. Also, if you send a reminder, that increases likelihood of conversion. If you're in a business where you will not be penalized by double booking or you're not going to have to share personally identifiable information and you can double or triple book clients and bring them in together and process them at the same time, I encourage you to do that. Innovate in your business. You must do things differently if you can. So I understand, and here's another thing, if people are coming late or they're trying to stretch out the time when they're supposed to be within a 30 minute slot, Always be cordial to your customers. When they come and let them know, hey John, thank you so much. I'm really glad you're, you're here. And I have made sure that during this 30 minute session, we're gonna get everything done that we need to get done. I got another meeting right, right on the 30 minute line. So I, we're gonna make sure that we're efficient. We're going to get it done. Let them know that in advance so that they show up on time. There's a couple different strategies you could use. I hope one of those four that I've identified will help you. A, get them to write down the appointment. B, if you can get them to sign something. C, if you can double or triple book. And then D, letting them know, I need you on time because I got another appointment. Scarcity is going to improve their ability to be timely. Hey, Ricardo, you said, just in the super chat, you said, who has sent those resumes with me? Ricardo, I appreciate it, Saint. We have band video super chat. He said, how to start from rock bottom, no career or college. Nice. That's a great place to start because you got nothing to lose. That's like fighting a boxer who has to knock you out. You know, he's gonna throw everything at you. And if he's already down in the points, he has nothing to lose. If he gets knocked out, he was gonna lose anyway. So he has to fight like everything counts. So if you have no college, that's fine. Cause hey, guess what? Most people go to college and they come out, they're still stupid, huh? Most people go to college, they get a degree in something that's meaningless. African-American studies, English, sociology, political science. No disrespect, I got a degree in political science. It's worth squat. So here's the thing. What you wanna focus on acutely is ask yourself, is there anything I have a unique knowledge about? Something I know better than other people? That's number one. If there's nothing you know better than other people, what are you insanely interested in to where you can go focus on that thing and study that particular industry, product, or service at a level to where you can outperform other people? That's where you really need to start. You gotta be a salesperson, you gotta create a product or service, but do something that you know, something that's simple enough for you to be successful with it. Really, you're talking about something big, which is starting from scratch, so to speak. If you can, I would encourage you to get a consultation, because it really sounds like you need some one-on-one -on -one attention to brainstorm on what you can do. But what I wanna warn you against is don't try to walk the common path becoming a SoundCloud rapper, becoming a personal trainer, becoming a content creator. Those are all things that you could be very successful at, but those are highly competitive fields. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but it means that it's a low barrier to entry. There's a lot of people trying it, and it's gonna be hard to become a millionaire in those pursuits. So I highly suggest you do something that not everyone is doing. Congratulations. I look forward to hearing about your graduation. Hey, Fresh Street 061, you super chatted. You said, what are some tricks that you use to fight the feelings of tiredness and procrastination? Thank you for your time. One great trick is Bridget. Great trick. Because guess what? If I tell Bridget, hey, look, I need to wake up early and run 10 miles. Well, you better believe if the morning comes and I'm not up and at them, Bridget's the first person to say, hey, bro, hey, bro, weren't you supposed to run 10 miles? Now, me being the kind of man I am, running off of ego sometimes, there's no way in hell I'm going to let her say, weren't you supposed to run 10 miles and you're not keeping your word? Now, nah, I'm going to have to get up and lace up those shoes. That's one way. Another way is when you really want something. You're running towards something you want or you're evading something you don't want. You have to make emotion intense in your mind. Use psychological devices. For example, you got an ex-girlfriend who dumped your ass and her new boyfriend is in better physical shape than you are. That should motivate you. 
huh? You look at your next door neighbor who you don't like, and he's in better physical shape than you are, and if something pops off, he's gonna give you the boo bap. That should motivate you. Find a psychological device to drive you forward. But here's the thing, not everybody's going to win. You have to ask yourself, are you going to be one of the winners? Because hey, you do average things, you're gonna get average outcomes, you're gonna live an average life. You have to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary outcomes. You don't get to live at the top by accident. So you really have to believe you are special. You are the guy. You are remarkable. You are great. And when you believe that, you inherently believe that there are other people who are not as great. And every single day, you got to go out and show them why you are the top dog. But hey, before you go outside and show them, inside of your house, you have to show yourself by getting your butt out of the bed and getting to work. Katie Lance Ronison, another who is payment, who said, how do I motivate my business partner after going through depression? He's the smartest guy I know, but our business is suffering because of it. That's an instability in your business. If this is something that's been going on for a significant amount of time, you need to start thinking about how you can protect yourself business-wise. Can you separate him and bring somebody in? You never want to have a single point of failure in any system. Remember, you never want to have a single point of failure in any system, meaning if one thing in the system breaks, everything falls apart. If your business partner is a half of your system, a critical piece, and he's falling apart, it will wreck your money machine. And hey, guess what? Nothing slows up. That money machine got to keep on, got to keep going, bruh. So I assure you, if you don't think you can doctor fill him up out of that depression, if you can't Sigmund Freud psychotherapy him out of that depression, then you need to start thinking about how you can pull out and pull into a better situation for yourself. Because as I always tell you, number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. You got to show love to yourself first and foremost. Don't let anybody bankrupt you. And as the pimp to tell you, one is so close to none. If you got one business partner and that's the one you got to rely on, and if he's not performing, nah, bruh, go ahead and throw that replacement. Coach, we need a sub. Coach, we need a sub. Take him out. It's from Anton B. He said, I'm going in the military as an officer, which is a higher rank for some people who've been in for many years. Yes. How do you lead and manage people? Number one, you have to believe in yourself with everything. So when you end up in that top position, you have to believe that you deserve to be there. The number one reason people will look up, you, look up to you as a leader is because they know that you got the goods. You will display the goods in your conduct, in your ethic, but you will always display respect to others. Even those who are below you, show them the same level of respect you would show people above you. And when you always offer yourself as a sincere servant, you will be a great leader because people think leadership is about being the glamorous one in the spotlight out in front when in reality, leadership is about being a servant, making people better human beings, making them better at their job. And when they can identify their progress as something tied to you, they will thank you, they will prize you, they will view you as a leader. So always stay focused. Anytime there is a task, you always outperform on the task. If your men are running 10 miles, outrun those sons of bitches and run 13 miles just to show them why you are the boss. And if you can't outrun them, go to the back and the man who's running the slowest, help him catch up. But you figure out a way to add value in the show. There's a reason you're in the alpha position. Never by accident. Now saints, I really wanna encourage you also as a man, think before you speak. Some of you think that you sound smart when you're being contrarian. To be contrarian is to just go against something or to speak critical thoughts without being mindful. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. There's nothing wrong with adding an alternative opinion, but you should ask yourself before you do that, A, will I, the speaker of this alternative opinion, will I benefit when I share this opinion? Will the person I'm advising be accepting to this advice? Will this do me any good? Because generally speaking, people don't want your opinions. Generally speaking, a man has more power in his silence than in his words.